Hi, I'm Megan Riley. We're here at the 2020 Pasadena Showcase House of Design. Built in the 1930s, this home has been completely renovated by 20 top interior designers. It will officially unveil to the public in early October. Guests will have the opportunity to virtually tour the house, meet the designers, and hear all about this amazing renovation. And we at West Edge are further bringing the house to life with an all new series called In Session. We've invited our favorite tastemakers and experts in a variety of areas, from food and wine to wellness and entertaining. They'll be sharing their tips and tricks on everything to really live a more inspired life. And we hope that this series will inform, entertain, and perhaps encourage you to try something new. So as we like to say here, do try this at home. Today we are in session with Chef Kim Vu. Chef Kim is the owner of Vucatious Catering and Sorry Not Sorry Restaurant. Today, she'll be giving us her insider tips on how to host the perfect get together at home. She also has the honor of being the first person to ever use this brand new beautiful kitchen here at the Pasadena Showcase House. This kitchen was designed by Laura Muller and her talented team at Four Point Design Build. And it really is the perfect setting for the gourmet chef or the aspiring home chef. Let's go meet up with Chef Kim. Hi, I'm Chef Kim Vu. I'm the executive chef and owner of Vucatious Catering and Sorry Not Sorry in West LA. Today, I'm in the 2020 Pasadena Showcase House for the Arts, and I'm so excited to cook in this brand new kitchen. I'm the first. I've got a brand new kitchen here with all new monogram appliances, and I'm going to show you quick and easy tips for entertaining at home, whether or not you have a small party or a large party. Let's go ahead and get started. When I talk to my clients at Vucatious Catering, the number one thing they ask me, and my friends ask me too, how do I throw a fantastic party without being enslaved and trapped in the kitchen? How can I be in my party? Well, I'm gonna share with you my catering secrets today to show you exactly how to do that. We're gonna cook along uh, in a quick cooking demonstration. We're gonna make some delicious gazpacho andaluz and we're gonna make some beautiful party platters. I'm gonna show you how to make them beautifully presented with full of color and vibrant produce from the Santa Monica Farmer's Market. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to prep all of my vegetables for my grilled vegetable platter. Now in planning all of our parties, what we wanna do is think about our logistics and our timeline and everything that has to be done first. So cooking has got to be done first. Imagine that you're still cooking while guests are walking in through the door. That's not going to work, so we've got to do that first. I've got some gorgeous yellow Italian squash and zucchini from the Tutti Frutti Farms located in Central Valley. They come down to the Santa Monica Farmer's Market every single Wednesday, and I'm just gonna give these guys a rough chop. I've already washed the vegetables, and if you're shopping at the Farmer's Market, you'll wanna be sure to give your vegetables a good wash. I'm gonna lop off the tops and the bottoms of my zucchinis and cut them in half. Now, this is gonna be a hearty, rustic dish. I like to call it rustic elegant. Wait till you see how it comes out. Um, I think that's actually going to be fine for today for our presentation purposes. So we've also got some ball squash. This is based on a Mexican zucchini. Now I'm going to throw all of these ends to the side here. Now if you're lucky enough to have a home like this Pasadena Showcase home, you can easily compost all of your vegetables. Now I'm just making some good vertical cuts here on all of my squashes. And today, I'm also gonna throw in some bell peppers. If you didn't know it, here in Southern California, it's pepper season. We've got all kinds of peppers for you. We've got, of course, these bell peppers, which I'm cutting up. We've got uh, poblano peppers, hatch chilies. It's basically chili and pepper season. Now, one thing I love about cooking with produce from the farmer's market is all of the wonderful variety. Now, these are all bell peppers, but you, have you ever seen any peppers like this? These are purple tequila peppers. And I've got some yellow bell peppers here. And I've got some orange, like fire combination bell peppers as well. These are all gonna go into my vegetable platter. Now, at Vocacious Catering, one of the things that's very important to us is our presentation. Now, you might wonder, why is that? 
Well, we eat with our eyes first, don't we? So it's important to make the food look delectable, look beautiful, look appetizing in order to have a great party and a lot of fun. Now, the trick is, in designing your grilled vegetable platter, or any kind of party platter food whatsoever, is you want to think of just like an artist. Now, we, I know that people say chefs are artists too and creative too, but it really goes beyond that. In designing this particular dish, I'm not just thinking about what is delicious to eat um, or what is seasonal, but I'm also thinking about color, texture, space, um, height, and I'm gonna show you how to do all of that on today's vegetable platter. So here I go, prepping my bell pepper. Um, again, I've got my ball squash. I've got some yellow zucchini on here. Let's see what else I can put on here. I'm gonna do a little bit more yellow zucchini. Yes, we're doing this on the fly. And that's exactly how we cook in our kitchens at home, right? Sometimes you've got to open up that fridge and just cook what you got. Now, once my vegetables are prepped, it's time to season them. We're going to salt, pepper, and olive oil them, and I'm gonna do that right in this pot over here. Now, of course, at home, you'll wanna use a mixing bowl. You know, sometimes when I go on cooking demonstrations or cooking in a brand new first time used kitchen like this, we never know what's inside. So it's a little bit of adventures and catering, if you will. And it's also a great example of what we're able to do at Vocacious Catering. We have catered in homes, in offices, out in the wild, literally. We never know what we're walking into, and you've got to be ready to make these decisions on the fly. Don't let uh, not having something in your kitchen at home frustrate you and keep you from preparing a delicious meal for your guests. All right, so in this pot, I have my mixed vegetables, salt, pepper, and olive oil. I'm gonna give that a quick toss, and then I'm gonna walk over and show you this beautiful monogram induction touch stove. Come on over. So I'm over here at this brand new monogram induction stove. I love this gold color. So I've got some slide technology so that I can turn on the stove with a swipe, and then I can sync the burners together by just pressing this button here. So now they're synced together. I'm gonna actually throw my vegetables onto this warming griddle. Um, you can see my griddle is small here, and um, even though it's small, I can still just layer on all of my vegetables. And while we cook these vegetables, and get some beautiful grill marks on them, I'm gonna go ahead and make our gazpacho soup. Now we're so lucky here in Southern California to be able to have fresh heirloom tomatoes all the way through the end of the year. And so basically, I will be making gazpacho soup and eating cold soup all the way through the end of the year. Now, of course, tomato bisque, a hot soup, is very popular in the winter too. Now, instead of using canned tomatoes, if you're lucky enough to live in Southern California, you have an opportunity to have them fresh from the farmer's market. All right, so I've got my blender. So if you don't know what gazpacho soup is, it is a cold soup that is made with raw vegetables. And today I'm gonna to make traditional gazpacho andaluz, Andalusian from Spain. All right, so I've got some heirloom tomatoes and I'm just gonna basically chop my tomatoes down. Now you can see that these don't look like conventional tomatoes from the conventional supermarket. And my handy dandy blender over here is very powerful and very strong. But I'm gonna go ahead and chop these tomatoes just to give it a little bit of help so that we can make this a little bit faster too. So I'm gonna put two pounds of tomatoes right into this blender. While that's actually going, I'm actually gonna soak some bread as well. All I need is this bowl. I'm gonna put some water in it. So I've got some just plain water in this bowl and then I've got some old bread. Now, if you don't have old bread, fresh brand new bread is perfectly fine, but I'm basically going to thicken my soup with this bread. So for those of you who are vegan, this is a perfect soup for you because it is thick and creamy, but without any dairy products whatsoever. So I'm just throwing this old bread right into the water. I'm gonna let it soften and soak up. Now I'm going to go ahead and complete my gazpacho. Here's my other large heirloom tomato. And we're gonna give this some beautiful cutting here. Now, check this out. Why does this heirloom tomato look so funky? Well, as its name implied, heirloom variety vegetables are vegetables that are sort of like untouched or unbred. They are sort of original varietals of vegetables uh, from what I wanna say back in the day. Everyone's back in the day is a little bit different, right? Uh, so this is considered an original variety of tomato. 
So in here I've got my tomatoes. I'm also going to throw in two cloves of garlic, already peeled. I'm also going to throw in some red wine vinegar. We're going to season this with salt, pepper, and cumin. Now for the bread. The bread is soaking in the water, and I'm just going to squeeze out the bread very lightly. Ooh, that's a lot of fun. If you have kids at home, you can try doing this with them. I dare you. That sounds like a mess, though. <laughs> but it would be sure a lot of fun for the kids. So I'm squeezing out the water from the bread and throwing it all in my blender. In about 30 seconds, we're going to have a delicious Spanish gazpacho andaluz. While this is on the blender, I'm going to take my extra virgin olive oil and I'm going to slowly drizzle the extra virgin olive oil right into the blender. And that's it. Voila. We have gazpacho soup. Quick, easy, simple. I can smell it. Oh, I wish you guys had smell-o-vision. And of course, one of the most fun things about serving gazpacho is all the toppings you can put on it. I'm super into bell pepper, so today I'm going to go ahead and put some bell pepper. And this is going to give my soup some extra special crunch. How many of you guys like to eat crunchy things? Chips. Oh, I love tortilla chips like on the top of my salad or something like that. And then after I garnish with my bell pepper, I'm actually going to put some fresh herbs for my garden on there. Let's see, what do I have here? I got some chives, which I absolutely love. So let's go with some of these bell pepper and these chives. So here I have gazpacho andaluz, garnished with tequila purple peppers from Tutti Frutti Farms and fresh garden chives. Now here's a party tip for you guys. If you want to throw a gazpacho party this season, all you need to do is put a large soup tureen on your buffet table and put all of the toppings out on the side. Kind of like how you would do a taco party. Maybe some topping ideas would be some fresh chopped vegetables like onions, tomatoes, cilantro. You could even do grilled corn, avocados, anything you want like that. And then just imagine going down the buffet line, scooping out your individual soup, and then topping it with the toppings that you love. Everyone can have a different gazpacho. So a great occasion for a gazpacho party. I'm going to head back over to my stove where my vegetables are grilling so that I can give them a turn over. And I'm just going to turn my vegetables over. I can smell them. They are looking good. They're smelling good. Look at these beautiful grill marks that I'm getting. One of these grill pans is a great way to impart beautiful grill marks to your food and that grill texture and that grill flavor. On to our next dish. Can you believe it? We've already grilled vegetables and made some gazpacho soup. I'm going to go ahead and sort of clear off my station a little bit. Now, of course, working in my restaurant or at my catering business, it's so important to keep a clean station. Um, but the best part about making all this food ahead of time for your party is that you can make a giant mess in your kitchen. And as long as you get it done before the party, nobody will ever know. Okay, on to the next dish. We've made gazpacho. We are grilling some vegetables. They're finishing up. Now I'm going to make a really quick salad and then get into some plating. I've got this gorgeous purple uh, vegetable today, so purple cabbage. And I love making a purple cabbage salad or any sort of cabbage salad for parties. The reason is your ingredient choices matter for your party. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, if I chose maybe like a spring green mix or an agranic green mix or something that is um, really leafy, it might wilt when I dress it. I mean, has that ever happened to you? You've gone to toss a salad, but then it takes you too long to get to and eat it. And now you've just got like a wilted mess. Well, if you choose hearty lettuces like kale or cabbage, that's not going to happen to you. And like I said at the beginning of the segment, I'm going to show you how to throw a party without being enslaved in the kitchen. That basically means you just need to plan ahead and make everything in advance. If you choose a kale or cabbage salad, that means you can dress the salad, have it ready to go, and not worry about it wilting at all. All right, I've cut off the bottom of my cabbage salad with my big girl knife. I'm going to cut this baby right in half. Beautiful looking. Look how gorgeous this is. I'm actually going to save this and use it as a garnish as well. Now you can do this by hand with a knife. You could even use a grater. Some people like a, like a grated cabbage. It's completely up to you. I'm just going to give this like a rough chop. My favorite kinds of parties are to do something a little bit rustic 
but still luxurious at the same time. I'm gonna brand that Rustic Lux. Trademark. <laughs> I'm going to make a quick salad dressing, and then I'm gonna dress this up with a little bit of tomatoes, herbs, and some fun other ingredients that I've brought home from the farmer's market. This is a basic, basic salad dressing recipe. A little bit of honey, and I've got Dijon mustard here for you, balsamic vinegar, and my extra virgin olive oil. Whiskity whisk time, so very simple. Now one thing I love about this salad dressing recipe is that you can make this ahead and store this in an airtight container for several weeks at a time in your refrigerator. This is something you definitely want to make ahead of your party. Now this is what I call a mother recipe for a salad dressing. It's just got the Dijon mustard, balsamic vinegar, extra virgin olive oil, and honey for sweetener. You don't like a sweet uh, salad dressing, or if you're on a special diet where you don't want to have added sugar, you can go ahead and leave that out. Now the reason why I call this a mother dressing is because we have the opportunity to jazz up our dressing with extra herbs, citrus, seasonings, spices. It's completely up to you. So I happen to be tossing these ingredients in the salad dressing individually. Why is that? Now usually if you make a big salad at home, um, and you throw everything to a, into a bowl, and then you toss this out, what happens to all of your toppings? They slide right down into the bottom of the bowl, and then you have no idea what kind of salad you're eating. I know this happens to you because it happens to me too. So one of my top catering secrets and restaurant secrets for you is to basically toss your ingredients separately so that you can plate them beautifully into whatever you know vessel or bowl that you have. So. I put the cabbage in first, just as a base. Now into my dressing bowl, I'm also gonna put my dill herbs, some people call it dill weed. I'm gonna put my cherry tomatoes and my yellow bell peppers. I'm gonna give this a toss, and then I'm gonna carefully lay all the ingredients all over my red cabbage. Look at this rainbow salad situation. All right, here's our second dish of the day. So we've got our gazpacho andaluz and a beautiful pre-dressed cabbage salad. Let's grab these grilled vegetables off the stove so we can go ahead and plate them up. Here's a little bit of a pro tip for you. When cooking in the kitchen, make sure to use kosher salt instead of iodized table salt. That way you get a beautiful salt seasoning and enhancement of your food, but you avoid that sort of tingy, mineral, metallic flavor of iodized sea salt. All right, so here's our grilled vegetables that we had from earlier. Now it's time to plate onto this beautiful platter. I'm gonna grab some kale. So this is some kale that I've gotten from the market here, uh, some curly kale. And the reason why I'm gonna use some kale is to basically give visual interest to my vegetable platter. And I'm gonna use it to give height and dimension to my platter, something that's also very important in food plating. All right, so I'm gonna snap this kale right in half. I'm gonna place it, I'm gonna use my sort of board handle here as my 12 o'clock, and I'm gonna plate towards you, you so that you can see. And I've got this green curly kale here, and because I'm interested in contrasting colors, I'm gonna put my yellow Italian squash right down the center. So I've got a beautiful contrast in shape and in color. Let me find all of my yellow things because I'm going to put them right there all together. And look at those gorgeous grill marks. Okay, so now, maybe around the edge, I'm going to cut my bell peppers into sort of triangles. So okay, I've got some rectangular shapes on my zucchini and now I've got some triangular shapes on my bell pepper. I'm going to grab a little bit more kale so I can add more height and dimension to some of the other foods that I'm gonna put on here as well. And let's go ahead, Oh, I've got purple bell peppers, that's gonna look absolutely gorgeous up against my kale. And then I've got some yellow bell peppers here as well. So you'll notice I'm doing a few different things, sort of my plating tricks for you, is I'm using this green kale to sort of add height and dimension to the platter. I'm also making sure to contrast the colors between my base lettuce leaves, the kale, and the food that's on top of it. In addition to that, I'm making sure to contrast the colors of the food right next to each other. Then you'll notice each of my foods are a different shape as well. So here is the third dish that we've completed today, an absolutely gorgeous 
Santa Monica Farmer's Market grilled vegetable platter. These vegetables are from Tutti Fruity Farms uh, out in Central California. We've got our yellow Italian squash, our Mexican ball squash, a variety of bell peppers in red, orange, tequila, purple, and yellow, and of course our heirloom cherry tomatoes along with our yellow Italian squash. Third dish down, a few more to go. I'm gonna start by cutting this big, beautiful pineapple. I'm gonna cut off the bottom of the pineapple so that I get some stability on my cutting board. And I'm gonna trim at this pineapple by just cutting right underneath the skin. You wanna make sure to get all the eyes of the pineapple right off. And with this section of the pineapple, I'm gonna make some pineapple spears. Now with the other part of the pineapple, I'm just gonna do sort of randomly cut cubes. Next, I'm gonna carve up a cantaloupe. And I'm gonna sort of peel the skin of my cantaloupe. We do have to de-seed this cantaloupe, but that's fast and easy to do. And I'm gonna do it with my big girl spoon, half of my cantaloupe that I'm gonna use for a decorative purpose. I'm gonna lay this on my cutting board at an angle. I'm gonna imagine that this is a bowl or a cornucopia, and my plan is to put berries in here spilling out of this bowl. But if I just lay this on my platter, it's going to slide around, it's not gonna stand up the way I want it to. So with my knife, I'm going to cut diagonally and flatten out my cantaloupe. Now it doesn't move around, it's completely stable on the plate and it's ready to hold anything that I want. So I've got my orange cantaloupe, I've got yellow pineapple, I've got red sleeveless watermelon right here and then we're gonna punctuate everything with berries and call that a day for this particular dish. So here is our next dish of the day. I love this, I could eat this all day long. It's impressive, it's inexpensive, it's fresh, it's healthy, and it's delicious at the same time. So here is a beautiful market fruit platter for you to decorate your table. So let me pull out of my drawer. I've got some Italian mortadella, I've got some Genoa salami, and then I've got some Italian prosciutto as well. So the kale is gonna help me sort of divide the different meats apart, also provide that height and volume that I was talking about. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna slice my mortadella into like big, like one and a half inch strips. And then I'm gonna take the mortadella and I'm just sort of wiggle waggle back and forth. So the point is not to cover the plate, the point is to provide visual interest, texture, and height to your food. And then finally the prosciutto. You're gonna peel it straight off your parchment and very similar to the mortadella, we're just gonna sort of wiggle it back and forth. Over here, uh, let's see, I've got some almonds, two different kinds of olives that you can put right onto the plate. And then I'm gonna round this out with some little bit of salted pistachios. All right guys, we're almost there. We've got our grilled vegetable platter. We've got our fresh fruit platter. We've got a gorgeous charcuterie platter. And now it's time to make our cheese platter. This particular cheese is already a triangle wedge shape, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it that way. Now, for my soft cheeses, I'm gonna leave the soft cheeses more whole on the platter. Uh, and you'll need to have like a cheese knife or something like that in order for people to serve themselves. But for my hard cheeses, I want to go ahead and pre-cut them for my guests so that it's easier for them to pick up with their hands and eat. I'm gonna take my Manchego cheese and I'm gonna go ahead and sort of lean this cheese up. So this way the kale is gonna sort of lift up the food here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my soft cheeses. So today for my hard cheese, I only have the Manchego and then I have a variety of soft cheeses today. So I have a brie wheel here. Now don't just throw the brie wheel onto your cheese platter. You're gonna to want to do what? Add some visual interest. I'm gonna stack them up and I'm gonna put them on my cheese platter. Okay, so I've got a brie here in the corner, I've got a soft blue, I've got this manchego cheese, I've got this goat cheese chef. So I've got a zigzag pattern going with my cheeses and right in between everything, I'm gonna take some crushed black pepper and I'm gonna season my goat cheese with a little bit of black pepper. If you wanna get crazy, you can also season your goat cheese with other spices. Today, I'm gonna to use some coriander. So here's a little bit of coriander, and then I've got some dried apricots and other dried fruit. 
And when it comes to sort of making these like luxurious rustic platters like this, I'm gonna say more is more. This is the opposite of the whole less is more concept. More is more. More is more on the fruit platter. More is more on the grilled vegetable platter. More is more on the charcuterie platter. Do you get what I'm saying here? More is more on the cheese platter. Don't be afraid to decorate. The best part is that it's all edible. Now it's time to make our two drinks. We can't have a great party without that, right? I'm gonna make for you a beautiful, like, non-alcoholic mocktail, and then we're going to have a very fun sangria cocktail as well. I'm always starting to do these non-alcoholic cocktails now, just so that people can have something delicious to see, sip on um, that's sort of like fun for them, they can feel like they're in the party, but if they don't feel like having an alcoholic drink or if they need to hydrate before tucking into a bottle of wine, they can do that too. So what I'm gonna have here is I have this container. So here's my fresh squeezed lemon juice for you. You can use a juicer, you can juice this by hand, it's completely up to you. I'm also gonna put a little bit of simple syrup in this. So we made this before our segment today. So equal parts lemon juice and simple syrup. And then eight parts club soda. I'm also going to put some fresh citrus. I've got some lemons and some limes over here. Now you might be asking me, what's simple syrup? Well, simple syrup is just sugar water. We make simple syrup at my bar called Sorry Not Sorry because it's easier to mix cocktails with simple syrup rather than putting straight granulated sugar into a drink. As you can imagine, it would take a long time to dissolve. If you don't know how to make simple syrup, it's very easy. Just put equal parts sugar and water on the stove, bring it to a boil, turn off the heat, and then you have simple syrup. I'm gonna take some of my club soda, and I'm gonna pour this in for a gorgeous lemon-lime citrus sparkling mocktail. I'm also going to put some fresh herbs in there. And today I've chosen thyme from the garden. So I've got my fresh herbs. Now we don't wanna be eating the thyme in our drink, so you're gonna put the thyme sprigs in whole. You can make this ahead of time. And the thyme, aha, you can make this ahead of time with your thyme. <laughs> so you can make this ahead of time and it will give you a gorgeous herbal flavor to your drinks. Simple as that. If you want a little bit of color contrast into this drink, feel free to throw in a red strawberry or a red raspberry or two, just to float it in there. All right, so this is our quick and easy citrus berry thyme sparkling mocktail. That's a mouthful and it will taste great too. All right, so here is our mocktail of the day. Now, the next thing we're gonna make is a sangria. Now, sangria I have seen with red wine and white wine, but at Sorry Not Sorry, which is my bar in West LA, we make it with rosé wine. Today, I'm gonna make it with some Italian rosé wine. And now you might be asking me, Kim, how are you gonna make a sangria so quick on camera? Usually, you would take the fruits that are going into sangria and you would soak them overnight in a brandy. However, I'm gonna show you guys today a quick and easy sangria that is delicious and very easy to make. You're gonna need some citrus. So I've got my oranges, I've got another lemon, and I'm gonna grab a lime as well. Now in my sangria, we're gonna get another visit from our friend, some fresh lemon juice, some simple syrup. Now I'm gonna use some orange liqueur. Then I'm gonna to top this off with my rosé wine. All the way up. <laughs> this rosé wine happens to be very pale. If you use a darker rosé, you'll get a beautiful blush color out of it. And that's it, simple and easy. Use a big wooden spoon to give this a stir. And then I'm just gonna garnish this right on top with a little bit of fresh herbs. Today, I've got basil from my garden and I'm gonna pop that right on top. Okay, so here's our cocktail today. Don't get them mixed up. So we've got a sparkling mocktail and then a beautiful sangria. And like I said at the beginning of the segment, I'm gonna show you how to throw a party without being enslaved in the kitchen. That basically means you just need to plan ahead and make everything in advance. When you walk out the door onto this patio and see a spread like this and a setting like this, you know that this party is gonna be super fun, super delicious, but at the same time, it's not overly fussy. And that's what I love about this idea of simple elegance. 
And there's no better way to elevate a tablescape or a table setting than using a real napkin. Something simple and plain yet versatile. And I love to put my napkin underneath the bowl like this. Just the lip of the napkin just touches and grazes the edge of the chair like this. And I set my china right on top. Like I said, this is about simple, elegant. This table says, let's sit down, let's eat, and let's focus on each other instead of all the little details on the table. Hey, cheers. Thank you for having Abby. us over. Fantastic. To learn more about Chef Kim and her catering business, visit bucacious.com. And if you're in LA, be sure to try her restaurant called Sorry Not Sorry.